Well, I'm very pleased to welcome Dr. Paul Halverson, uh, not just an authority at that convergence of hunger and health that Gleaners uh, finds ourselves uh, squarely in the middle of in terms of mission, but my fellow Rotarian, a longtime resource and authority that yes. we draw on from time to time. So thanks for being here. Great to you're, be here. You're really, we're here to talk about that convergence of hunger and health, and even that yes. is in a larger poverty context. Maybe if you would give us a little bit of current state and the way you think we should be thinking and our audience should be thinking about hunger and health connected. And then we'll move on to a little bit of future thinking. The connection between hunger and health is so pronounced and increasingly we know that things like hunger and homelessness that really have to do more with our environment and, and the way in which we live has so much more to do with our health than what what we would have otherwise imagined. And so when people don't have access to uh, healthy foods, uh, or even knowing whether they're gonna right. have access to foods, um, they may eat the wrong foods, they may, and for them it's not wrong. It's, they don't know when they're gonna get their next meal. As you well know, um, we're, we're continuing to see food insecurity increase dramatically. Right. And as we see the uh, the population increase in Marion County, for example, we see, yes, we see an increase, but we see more and more people in poverty, more and more people who are food insecure. You know, we have been uh, focused very much at that connection of hunger and health. Right. And, and not just thinking about and researching and finding partners and, and really trying to go about the right way of gathering the most nutritious food we possibly can right. in quantity right. and volume and really close the meal gap and nourish all of those we feed with yes. the best food we can. Right. And we now measure our success as an organization, not just in meals served, but in the impact of that food on the top 10 chronic health conditions yes. that you referred right. to. Right, right. Uh, we also interestingly find ourselves side by side now with hospital systems and health insurance companies and others who are increasingly focused and measuring based on social determinants of health. Yes. Is there anything you might share in that space with our audience? Yes. Um, but also any, any guidance for us in how we think about our work? It is heartening to see our hospital systems, uh, health insurers, beginning to get the, the message that if we can get upstream, we can actually decrease the demand for uh, health services because we can decrease the incidence of disease, right? And, right. and so part of our, um, our focus should continue to be a, 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 it being able to look at, the, at reducing food insecurity. It's not just um, any food. Right. It's being able to have a variety of foods. So if what we can provide in, in organizations like yours in terms of food supply, uh, a good variety of fresh fruits and vegetables as well as carbohydrates right. and proteins and others, that variety is what's so important. And unfortunately, it, it may not necessarily be the normal diet, right? right. Because we right. do know that eating well and eating good nutritious food actually does cost more money. Right. And the ability to um, access those fresh fruits and vegetables, for example, is not something that we should be able to, you know, we don't right. take that for granted. So right. it's really important that we stay the course. The other thing I think that's important is to recognize that not everybody that's food insecure is someone that you could pick out and say, oh, that's a food insecure person, right? right? But what we know is that increasingly, even people with a job are food insecure sometimes, right? right. And so being able to recognize that we're all part of a, an ongoing system of food delivery and education right. and helping to uh, recognize that it may be the part-time person that, you know, they do get a job, they have a job, they get a check, but they, they may need help. And right. uh, helping to identify those people uh, and helping them to recognize that um, getting help is both important to their health and, and also easily accessible. And we need to find ways in which to reduce right. the stigma of people that access uh, our food supplies. And I think large employers could do more to both educate and create opportunities for 
healthy foods and, and being able to set the tone for doing a better job. And I'm very proud of organizations that contribute to gleaners um, because I think this is a community problem. Right. And, and this is a community asset, right? So, right? so collectively, what we do and what you do really, really matters to change the trajectory of health in our community. Part of the issue is also recognizing that as a, the city of Indianapolis, what a wonderful place. I love Indianapolis. Right. But you know, our, our health rankings for Indianapolis, don't, we're not doing so well. Right. We've got a great health department. We've got a number of major employers that I think are really contributing substantially. But we, have, uh, we don't suffer evenly. We just recently uh, completed a survey, uh, a study actually, and what we determined is that if you look at the zip codes in the Indianapolis metropolitan area, what we see is um, a zip code that's just a little south. You could compare that zip code to Somalia or other third world countries, and the, the difference in life expectancy of a little baby born in that zip code as compared to 18 miles uh, to the north in Fishers this time, uh, is al almost 18 years difference. Wow. So you really need to look at the zip codes and beyond the zip codes, within the zip codes, the neighborhoods. And you know one of the projects that we've been involved with is a project called Dip In, which is a partnership between uh, the Fairbanks School of Public Health and, right. and Lilly, uh, working with Eskenazi um, and the Marion County Public Health Department. And in that project, we're working in three different neighborhoods. And those neighborhoods, uh, by the way, it is one of the highest uh, 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 prevalence of diabetes in our city. You know, Dr. Kane, such a wonderful right. uh, partner in public health. And, you know, she's an infectious disease doctor. She still sees patients. And she would tell me, you know, I see patients, and the very first time that somebody actually tells them they have diabetes, they're they're coming to the hospital to have their leg amputated because of the damage caused by diabetes. It should not be that, that people are losing limbs because of a preventable disease and preventable by things like improving nutrition and creating an awareness of the importance of, of healthy, um, healthy habits. In particular, it's not just healthy habits, it's having a job, right? Getting good right. nutritious food, being involved in a community where people care about you, creating that sense of neighborhood and so forth. So I, all of that goes into working with neighborhoods to create a, a change that focuses on their strength and that allows them to be successful. And at the very center of that is the security of of food, knowing where their food is going to come from and right. having a good nutritious uh, uh, food supply. Can you think about it in today's environment, um, we can do better, uh, uh, particularly here in Indianapolis where we've got so many people, there are terrific uh, opportunities to create uh, linkages and partnerships, but not true in every community, right? right? So being able to think that one through in terms of opportunities for improvement are, are so important, I believe. So one part I would ask you any thoughts you might have for where we might grow and develop that collaborative activity with healthcare uh, systems and providers, but also do you have any neighborhood or um, area specific ideas? Are there some geographic examples that you might point us to in the future? There are a number of parameters. It's not just life expectancy, but you have right. to kind of dig beyond that. And right. that's where I think we can partner with you to help identify some of those common characteristics. Certainly, um, unemployment, uh, family income, and, and all of that gets linked into issues around crime and uh, um, school attendance, literacy, all of those things contribute, as you right. well know, to uh, our ability to be able to create the environment under which people can live longer and healthier lives and having that quality of life that's right. so important. Increasingly, our hospital systems, our medical providers, 
uh, even ins health insurers are beginning to think differently. They're beginning to say right. it only makes sense if we can create better conditions and, and begin to get more upstream, we can have a greater impact. I think what we should be thinking about is being fully cognizant of some of that infrastructure that we need, right, for right. being able to distribute the perishable foods. One of the neat things we're seeing uh, in medicine and, and in health is increasingly these, uh, they're putting on culinary courses for doctors. The idea yeah. of, uh, you know, food is a prescription, helping to help, helping right. to create awareness around how to cook healthy, and then being, thinking about, uh, you know, what is available in your community. It, it, the idea of telling people they should have X, Y, and Z when you know it's not available isn't helpful. So it's a, uh, we're increasingly beginning to recognize it's not good enough to just say, you better eat better, right? right? But we, we need to think through, how do, how do we make that happen? It's important for all of us to recognize that, um, that we need to make this easy. We need to make the healthy choice right. the easy choice. And, yes. and I think that is so important and actually getting an uptake uh, of all of those things that we need to do from a health perspective. Mm -hmm. So we're, our message is getting through um, in terms of financial resources, but as you know, we're a complex organization, yes. and it's going to take more than that for us collectively, the community, not just gleaners, to tackle this. Yeah. Where's that best mobilization for those that share a passion at that convergence of hunger and health. There is an ironclad link between hunger and health. And just imagine being a child going to school and you didn't have dinner last night and you didn't have breakfast. Now imagine trying to concentrate on being successful in school. We need to recognize that um, there are ways in which we can address this issue. Um, this is not a, a foregone um, uh, issue. In other words, um, the ability to solve this problem is within our grasp. Yep. Uh, organizations mm -hmm. like Gleaners and, um, and people uh, all across the city who have such a passion for people, uh, are, we're all working together. We know how to fix this problem and the answer is in front of us and it's our responsibility to take this on. And yeah. we have the ability to make a difference. And you know, I, I tell people, it's not about how much you give. The fact of the matter is we, we need to contribute. We need to give. We need to right. be part of the solution. I totally agree. You know, it's our shared community. Yeah. It's our shared responsibility. We own it. That's right. So, yeah. well, thank you very much. You're and, welcome. I hope that know, helped. The Fairbank School is doing wonderful things and, well, and re you. rely on your knowledge and expertise. And, yeah. And uh, unfortunately, a, a, a source of data we don't all want to see, but we need to see. Well, that's true. Uh, so, thanks yeah. for sharing your time You're with us today. You're very welcome. Thank you.